the Constitution vests legislative power in Congress, not the House of Representatives, not the Senate. Legislative power, Your Honors, we are taught, can never be delegated. We only delegate rulemaking powers. Even Congress itself cannot change the procedure for making laws. It must adhere to, I quote, the finely wrought, single, and exhaustively deliberated procedure specified in the Constitution. More importantly, Article 6 itself commits the appropriation power to collective action by both chambers. Clearly, Your Honors, the power of the purse belongs to Congress, not to congressmen or senators. The 2013 GAAS provisions on PDAF and the 2014 NEP clearly identify individual legislators as the actors. It's not Congress. DBM 47 circular, DBM circular 457 again reinforces this. Your Honors, I will now move to our third substantive argument on checks and balances. The Constitution envisions a budget process where the executive's proposal are scrutinized by a disinterested Congress. It is a classic example of ambition countering ambition. The pork barrel destroys this balance. Its original sin is giving each legislator a direct financial interest in the smooth, speedy passing of the yearly budget. On the other hand, uncooperative legislators face retaliation from the executive's power to time the release of their PDAF. The recent privileged speech of one senator indicates that this is not just theory anymore. In turn, the executive's discretionary funds have been creatively fashioned with astonishing amounts. This year, the proposal is $449.95 billion. And the fact that legislators themselves seem surprised by this realization is a cause for worry. PDAF also impairs constitutional checks on Congress itself. We are taught in, in law school that Congress is checked by two things, self-regulation by the ethics committees and re-election. Despite the COA report, despite the plunder complaints, there does not seem to be any single ethics committee proceeding right now. As for re-election, PDAF proceeds provide the offender the same means to perpetuate access. DBM records themselves were used by a group to show that PDAF spending is concentrated in voterit areas and bailiwicks. In addition, PDAF impairs the power of impeachment. Recent political history shows that the chief executive has little to fear from impeachment with a pork barrel in place. On the flip side, we have also learned that the funds can be a useful tool to fuel impeachment. This is state capture, your honors. We are trapped in a vicious circle in which the key reform to break the gridlock is undermined by collusion. I move to the last topic, your honors, which is accountability. We are told that the new safeguards will work this time. They promise. We disagree. Based on paper, it should have been impossible to misuse the PDAF 